Rebirth is the first sign that the series was about to kick the Battle of Good vs. Evil storylines into high gear. And it's the first to explore how those lines can easily get crossed. Unfortunately, this one just never quite comes together. Caleb is getting teased by some older kids while he's fishing. A frustrated Merlin appears and tells him that she wishes she could take him in her arms and shield him from the abuse. Almost on cue, local drifter Ray, a bad boy with a heart of gold if ever there was one, appears and splashes the kids with some malicious littering. This is enough to confound the teens so they stop making fun of Caleb and start shaking their fists like Ray stole their lemon tree. Merlin is immediately seduced by this handsome stranger from the wrong side of the tracks and his hot rod. And of course, Lucas is taking this all in from afar. The episode has an awkwardly timed promo inserted where the credits would normally be, but it does a good job of selling the premise. But for those who don't, it can be a mighty rough road. Back at the Holt house, Gail is entertaining a visit from her old college chum, Christy, played by Friday the 13th Part 2's Amy Steele. Christy is pregnant and lets Caleb feel the baby kick. Caleb advises her to have more than one child because being an only child is lonesome sometimes. Because if you only have one, it can get real lonesome sometimes. She. But I see your point. A stiff wind portends Merle's arrival, and she looks apprehensive. After everyone is gone, Merle vents that she never got the chance to do any of the things in life that bring other people pleasure. She claims she was gypped. She describes an afterlife as something akin to depression. No feeling of pleasure or pain, just weightless floating. She also twice swipes at the apples to prove her point. Merlin gets so worked up at the thought of never feeling touched that she incorporeally knocks over the apples. At school, Caleb gets scolded for painting an abstract flower instead of a representational image. Well, I didn't ask for an interpretation, Caleb. It seems like such a minor thing to get scolded over, but it's worth noting that abstract art was considered a bane to fascism. A large burst of wind blows open the door and disrupts class, but Caleb hears Merlin's voice telling him she's found a way to come back. Lucas takes a break from trying to trip Caleb into admitting that he talks to Merlin and harasses Ray instead. Ray says he just wants to get out of town. At dinner, Christy vents about how difficult the pregnancy is and how she's afraid to be happy because this is her third pregnancy, the first two having ended in miscarriage. Merlin sneaks a peek at them right before a flash of lightning outside. Christy takes a tumble and says she can feel something is wrong with the baby. And with that, Merlin arrives at the house, fully corporeal, and gives Caleb a big hug. Merlin. That she arrived with a swirl of violent wind, thunder, and lightning should probably portend a less than happy reunion. Merlin takes the name Hallie Monroe and becomes a boarder at the house, claiming her wallet and ID were misrouted by the bus line. Caleb worries that Merlin is being reckless and that she'll be recognized, but in the first episode it's implied that Merlin has been a shut-in since her mother's death, so very few of the townspeople ever saw her as a teenager. Over ice cream, Merlin even explains as much for the audience. It's at this point where you realize that Caleb never actually knew his sister as a healthy young girl. She was always the ward for him and his father. Merlin says she won't be staying long, but quickly changes the subject when Caleb tries to get her to explain. They frolic in the park before Ray interrupts and seduces Merlin into a boat ride. Caleb immediately gets jealous. If you haven't put two and two together yet, Dr. Matt tells Christy that her baby no longer has a heartbeat, and it's looking like it could be another miscarriage. Gail and Christy bully him into changing his prognosis, though, which seems like a wasted trip to the doctor. Matt says either way they have to deliver the baby soon. Ray lets Merle ride his motorcycle, which gets them pulled over by Lucas. Lucas interrogates Hallie, and sends her on her way before blackmailing Ray into helping him get rid of her. Lucas also finds a forlorn Caleb and tricks him into revealing that Merle is still around and talking. Think Merlin's lying to you? No, she'd never. What are you talking about? Merle's dead. Caleb is dejected because Merle is taking on a new, less innocent persona, and her limited time is being spent making out with Ray instead of hugging and protecting Caleb like she said she wanted to do. Merle explains she's just borrowing a life for a while so that she can return, and when Miss Russell mentions that Christie's baby seems to have its life snatched away from it, Caleb figures out what Merle is doing. Caleb confronts her, but she says that she's in love and she deserves some happiness. In front of a bizarre and janky background, Ray and Merlin make a plan to run away together, seemingly sealing the baby's fate and leaving Caleb to fend for himself. Lucas storms into Ray's place and makes him dig up Merlin's grave to show him the truth. 
I'm always a sucker for a good grave digging scene, and the dramatic hammer horror music makes it even more fun. Oddly, despite the revelation that Merle is a ghost, Ray shows up at the meet and kisses her. When she says she has to go, he reveals himself to be Lucas and tells her that he wants her to live. Of course, Merlin has already come to the moral realization that she can't kill the baby so she can live. So she takes a header off the bridge, sacrificing her own life just as Christy delivers the baby. Lucas is enraged as we cut to black. Rebirth is an interesting thematic episode that misses the mark for a few reasons. The first is that Merle's desire to be alive again, while understandable, is never really explored in the previous episodes. She always seemed happy to be guiding Caleb on his way, or enacting ironic vengeance on those who deserve it. While I'm not saying that that should be the extent of her character, something more than a want speech in the cold open would be nice. This feels like a sharp, selfish character turn for her. The other piece is that the episode suffers from the bad casting of Danny Masterson as Ray. Masterson would rise to fame on Fox's That 70s Show, but he's not able to walk that fine line between bad boy and ultimately sweet kid. His real-life nerve charges certainly don't help him as a sympathetic character. Not that that's the fault of the show, but it is reality. Naked Gun has that same problem. The plot of Rebirth is interesting from a moral standpoint, of course, and one can easily read it as an anti-abortion screed, but the trope of the resurrected hero who came back wrong harkens back to at least as far as Edgar Allan Poe. The episode is ambiguous as to whether Merlin's personality is darkened by whatever magic she uses to steal the fetus's life force, or if it's just a product of some poor setup. Either way, this darker turn for Merlin does portend some tough choices for Caleb's guardian angel.